service. Allow me to extend a personal invitation for you to get your brushes and, and your paints and paint along with us each show. And if you've been with us before, please allow me to thank you for inviting us back for another series of painting shows. We'll use about a dozen colors of some unorthodox brushes in each show. I'll show you how to put some of nature masterpieces right here on the canvas. So I tell you what, let's get started. Today we'll have them run all the colors across the screen right there that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me tell you what I've got going up here. Today I'm using an 18 by 24 inch double prime pre-stretched canvas, but you use whatever size you'd like. And I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid white. The liquid white is designed just to make the canvas wet and, and to make it slick. It allows us to actually blend color right here on the canvas. Makes your whole painting life a lot easier. So let's get started. I thought today we'd just do a very simple little scene that I hope you'll enjoy. Let's start with a little two inch brush and a touch of the alizarin crimson. And we just load a little bit right into the bristles. Pull a little paint out, tap the bristles firmly to assure a nice even distribution of paint all the way through the bristles. And let's go right up here. And we'll take this old brush and just make little X's, little crisscross strokes. We'll just very quickly drop in just a little warm part in the sky here. Maybe we'll have a little pink in the sky. I sort of like that. And in our world, we can do anything that we want to do here. Any old thing. There. Doesn't take too long when you're using the brush. It's two inches wide. Okay, without even cleaning the brush, we'll go right into, right into, little phthalo blue. <laughs> I like phthalo blue. It's a very warm blue. Very nice. Once again, just tap a little color into it, and let's go back up here. And still using our little crisscross strokes, X's. That's all they are, little X's. We'll just apply a little bit of the phthalo blue. Something about like so. Then we'll come back after we clean the brush and blend that together. Now the blue is many, many times stronger than this little pink area. It'll just eat it up, so be careful. Be careful. All go away. If you want to make the indication of a happy little cloud, all you do is just sort of tap. A little stringy cloud just lives right there in the brush. And that easy. We'll blend him out and have a little stringer cloud. There. Let's see what we have that on there. Let's have some water in this painting. I love water. And it's very easy to paint in this style. Still water is always level. And I think today we'll have still water. So pull from the outside in. Outside in. Something about like so. All right. Well, I have a little brush going. I want to darken the corners a little bit. I'm going to take a little Prussian blue and just add in the corners here and there. A little bit up there. And we'll go over to the other side. And add a little more and then down to the bottom. And we'll put a little down here too. I'm just putting a little Prussian blue in each corner to darken it. And then the most fun part of this whole technique is washing the brushes. Since these are oil paints, we're washing our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Shake off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That's really the most fun part of it. Now, with a clean brush, and it's relatively dry from just beating it, we'll start in the light area, which is the pink, and we'll blend it all together. Something about like so. That's all there is to it. Okay, down here, we'll just do the same thing. There. But it's that easy. That easy. What's so fantastic about this is that anybody, anybody can put a little masterpiece on canvas with just a little bit of practice, a vision in your mind, and off you go. All right. That's working so well. Take a little white, a little bit of the blue, grab a little more of the titanium white. I want to make a light blue color here, mostly phthalo blue. And let's just tap a little color into the bristles. This little two-inch brush will do marvelous things. Watch here. Watch here. Watch here. It's fun. Let's take the corner of the brush and just pull down. Something about like so. Straight down. Straight down. I'll make it look like little distant trees live far back in the distance. A little more color. And we'll just have it. We'll go. I don't know. Right there. In your world, you create any illusion that you want. There. But I want to keep the bottom light so it looks like mist. You could even take another two-inch brush, I have several, and tap it. Really get in there and tap it and then lift upward. 
it'll help create that illusion of mist right down at the bottom. And sometimes, sometimes it's a lot of fun to put several layers. It helps create depth in your painting. And for that, we'll add a little more blue, but we make it a little darker. Add a little bit of Prussian blue to it and make it a little darker, but the same thing. And we'll come back and let's put another little layer in here. Just touching and pulling downward. That's all we're doing. That's really all we're doing. Something about like that. There. Now we don't know where that goes. It doesn't matter at this point. And back to our other two inch brush. And we'll tap this. I want to create mist again. Notice the separation. It's caused because of the difference in color, difference in value. And that misty area turns out to be your very best friend. Take care of it. Treasure it. There. Okay. Let's have some more fun. <laughs> Let's see. Let's take some black, some Prussian blue, and a little phthalo blue. It doesn't matter. We just throw it on there. Crimson, too. What the heck? Be brave. Be brave. Let's put a little sap green in there, too. It's getting close enough. We should begin seeing some color. A little bit of white. Don't want it totally dark yet. There. Perfect. Can we wipe the old knife off? And let's get a mm, fan brush. We'll use a fan brush. Load it full of color. Both sides. Both sides. Okay, let's go up in here. Now maybe in our world, there lives, it does now, some little trees. With your brushes warmed up yet and you're ready? You can do this. You can do this. I know you can. I get letters every day from people all over the country that said they never believed they could paint, and they're doing it. Their friends and neighbors don't believe it when they look at their paintings, but they they are doing it. There, I'm gonna put some little trees back in here. Now these are a little closer. You're seeing a little more detail, a little more distinct. There, and we just drop them in. We don't know where they go. Wherever you want them. That's exactly, exactly where they should live. Don't put too much detail in here. It's too far away. You're not going to see a lot of detail. You see detail when it's very close to you. When things are far away, you make out form, shape, basic color. That's all. Save your detail to the foreground. The lack of detail helps also create that illusion of distance and depth in your painting. It's very, very important. Very important. Okay. I'm going to tap a little of that. That'll help create that illusion of mist down there, too. There, lift slightly upward, lightly, just a little bit, see? Now then, you know, when I was a traditional painter, one of the hardest things to make effectively was reflections. Watch how easy. I'll take some of that same color. We'll take a two-inch brush touch and pull down. Just pull straight down. It's most important to go straight down. Something like so. Straight down. Because of the noises. And very lightly go across. There. And instantly we have some nice reflections. That's simple. Now here's something that's funny. Take a little, I just use a little white. You want to create another plane in your painting. Take a little white and lift upward. And it'll make little areas back here that looks like a whole different plane and the white will end up looking like little trunks in those trees. There, and easy. Let's put a little water line. For that, we'll use a liquid white. Pull it out very flat, flat as you can get it. Cut across, okay? And we can go right up in here. And we can just drop in just a little water line. Just a happy little water line that lives back in here somewhere. We don't know where it is. Don't know that we even care. Just let your imagination take you anywhere you want to go. A lot of times I start a painting and have nothing in mind but the time of day and the time of year. And from that, you can paint some fantastic little scenes. Don't worry about it. You don't always have to have a perfect vision in your mind of what it is you're going to paint. Imagination is it's, it's like any other muscle in your body or like a muscle in your body. The more you practice, the better it becomes. Take some black Prussian blue. I'm going to put some phthalo green in there. I like phthalo green. Maybe a little crimson. There we go. All right, let me wipe off the knife. 
I just wipe the knife on a little, little, little paper towel. I would just use that brush, a little fan brush. Load some color into it, both sides of the brush. Both sides, let's go up in here. Let's have, mm, let's have a little evergreen tree. He lives right there, see? Just make a line, take the corner of the brush, make a touch. Make another one, and just sort of work from the center out. There it goes. It's easier to do them fast than it is slow, though. Here they come. Just sort of back and forth. I had a lady in class one time told me it was like making Z's, the letter Z. She called them Z trees. So I guess that's as good of an analogy as any. From the center out. The center of the tree should be the thickest, darkest, strongest part of the tree. Because you have leaves on the back, you have a trunk in the middle, and you have leaves on this side. We'll have one more in there. There we go. I have a little family of trees. You know, if you've painted with me before, I think everybody should have a friend, even a tree. Even a tree needs a friend. Now, if you want to reflect those, just pop in some general indications of where they are. No big deal, you see? Because we don't make mistakes here. We have happy accidents. <laughs> Very quickly, you learn to work with anything that happens. Take the big brush, pull down, straight down once again, and then go across. And we have instant reflections. I just use that same fan brush. It has that color we made the tree out of it. And I go through cad yellow and a little yellow ochre. Immediately we have green. There we are. Let's go up in here. And we can take that green. Let's go back and put some highlights on our little evergreen trees. There they go. All right, this little tree here. He's saying, don't leave me out. I need some too. There we are. There we are. There we are. All right. Now, we'll put a little liquid white right on that same brush because I want to lighten the color and make it a little thinner. A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. We mix them back up again. Let's go back up here. And we can just take this brush and let's just pop in the indication of some little bushes that live down here right down in his little foots. Something about like that. How's that? That looks like a little island. Let's put some dirt there. Let's take some white, a little dark sienna, mix them together, cut off a little roll of paint, a little bright red, and we'll sign this little rascal. I really hope you've enjoyed it. It's a very simple painting that you can do. And if you try it, I'd love to see some photographs of what you're doing. So if you have time, Take a photograph sent to us. Let us hear from you. Until then, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend.